Hey everyone, this is Will. I'm um, going to talk in this brief video about the efficient market hypothesis. So a brief introduction to the efficient market hypothesis. In an efficient market, uh, it's a market where there's an efficient processing of information. In other words, the market quickly and correctly adjusts to new information. In an efficient market, the prices of securities observed at any time are based on correct evaluation of all information available at that time. Therefore, in an efficient market, prices immediately and fully reflect available information. So here's the definition from Dr. Eugene Fama, who is widely um, regarded as having come up with this theory. Quote, in an efficient market, competition among the many intelligent participants leads to a situation where at any point in time, actual prices of individual securities already reflect the effects of information based both on events that have already occurred and on events which, as of now, the market expects to take place in the future. In other words, in an efficient market at any point in time, the actual price of a security will be a good estimate of its intrinsic value. So basically, you're... Fa the market is factoring into the events that have already occurred and those events that the market expects to take place in the future. So the efficient market hypothesis is made up of three progressively stronger forms, the weak form, the semi-strong form, and the strong form. So this, these concentric, concentric circles here show you basically the weak form, which is the small circle here. And that shows you it's based basically on historical prices and returns, right? So the circle represents the amount of information that each form of the EMH includes. The weak form covers the least amount of information and the strong form, which is the biggest circle, cover covers all the information. So this is all historical prices and returns. The semi-strong form is all public information. And then the biggest one is all information, public and private. So the weak form of the EMH states that past prices, volume, and other market statistics provide no information that can be used to predict future prices. If stock price changes are random, then past prices cannot be used to forecast future prices. Price changes should be random because information drives these changes and information arrives randomly. Prices should change very quickly and to the correct level when new information arrives. This form of the efficient market hypothesis, if correct, repudiates technical analysis. Most research supports the idea that markets are weak form efficient. So if we think about it, and we go back to the prior chart, do we think that the weak form holds? And the answer is probably yes. And the question is, why would the weak form hold? Can we think about this? Why would the weak form hold? What is the barrier to getting access to historical prices and returns? How hard is it to get historical prices and returns? Could you get them? Can I get them? The answer is yes, right? Can large, sophisticated investors get them? Yes, right? So we can all get access to historical prices for stocks, right? And we can get access to, to the returns. Okay, that's the first question. Second question is, can we process that information? The answer is yes, right? You can put it in an Excel doc. You can you can process it. You can calculate the returns. You can look at the changes in the returns. You can look at, um, you know, various different technical analysis, and you can try and predict what will be future returns based on past returns, right? And so, if you can collect the information for basically free. And if you can predict, the, if you can look at, do process the information for free, then there's really no barrier, right? There's no limitation to the arbitrage, right? There's no, nothing keeping you from accessing the information. There's nothing keeping you from processing. Therefore, there's no quote unquote limit to arbitrage. All right. So that's why weak form, right, of the efficient market hypothesis is probably true. There's nothing keeping investors from predicting future prices with past prices and volume. All right, now let's look at this semi-strong form. It says prices fully reflect all publicly available information and expectations about the future. 
This suggests that prices adjust very rapidly to new information and that old information cannot be used to earn superior returns. The semi-strong form, if correct, repudiates fundamental analysis. Most studies find that markets are reasonably efficient in this sense, but the evidence is somewhat mixed. So what do we think about this? Is there anything that keeps you and I from getting access to all publicly available information about firms? The answer is definitely yes, right? You and I can get past returns. We can get past prices, but we cannot get all publicly informa- available information about firms, right? You and I cannot know every single car that's in every single Target parking lot. It's publicly available, but we can't get all that information. We cannot know, for example, like what the satellite images are of every Wendy's drive through at all hours of her day that's publicly available likely but we can't get access to all that information right and even if we could even if we had like an image of every single wendy's drive-through we would not be able to or it would be difficult to process all that data right similarly even if we had a picture of every target parking lot 24 hours a day it might be difficult for us to process all that information and know what to make of it, right? Well, if we know lots of people are driving, you know, in Target, we don't know what they're buying inside, right? Um, so it's difficult to process in that sense. Um, and so, therefore, all publicly available information is A, difficult to collect, and B, difficult to process, and therefore, it's not going to be factored into prices. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if we know all the information that's, if we know all the like, all the information that's factored into Target's price, that probably says something about Target's main supp- suppliers, right? If if lots and lots of people are going to Target, does that say anything about what's going to happen to targets main suppliers let's say um i don't know lg refrigerators right if lots of people are going into target does that will that tell us anything about whether or not people are buying you know refrigerators from lg target sells refrigerators um we're not sure so semi-strong form you know most studies find that markets are reasonably efficient in the sense but the evidence is somewhat mixed right not i don't think all publicly available information is in prices and the reason for that is it's difficult to collect all publicly available information and it's difficult to price it in or it's difficult to process it as well and then finally the strong form the strong form says that prices fully reflect all information whether publicly available or not even the knowledge of material non-public information cannot be used to earn superior results most studies have found that the markets are not efficient in this sense. What do we think of this? Do we think that prices fully reflect all public and private information? So if the CEO knows something, you know, he's the CEO has decided that he's going to buy a, you know, he's going to acquire a company for $10 billion in a month. Do we think that the, and he's he's, he's going to pay a 50% premium uh, over the, the current uh, market price of the firm. Do we think that the current market price, the second the CEO decides that, does we think that the market price of the target goes up by 50%? No, right? That doesn't seem likely. Why? Well, first of all, we have, this country has insider trading laws. So... That would be material non-public information, right? There would be tipper, there's what's called tipper and tip E liability. So whoever traded on that material non-public information, the second they found out would have potentially criminal liability. And so the so again, the question, the the point is that there are laws, there's limits to arbitrage, right? There are laws that prevent that information from entering in to prices. And so the the strong form is likely likely doesn't hold. So as a result, the markets are efficient in many cases, but there are limits to arbitrage. There are information that prevents 
or there's limits to the information from getting into the prices, right? Some of that is the cost of the information, cost of collecting the information, the cost of processing the information, laws that prevent people from trading the information, putting the information into prices. And so limits to arbitrage are a critical, is a critical piece that prevents pe- things from getting into information from getting into prices. And that's why typically the weak form of the efficient market hypothesis is widely regarded to be true, but the semi strong form is in many cases not true. And the strong form is in many cases not true. And so here are the summary of the tests of the image. I hope this was helpful. See you in the next video.